Hello everyone, alongside Ron Ratner, I'm Kyle Turner, here to bring you the latest edition of the NEC On The Run Hoops podcast. Today we're talking men's basketball, and Ron, last week we had five teams tied for first place. Now it's Mount St. Mary sitting alone atop the NEC standings, but there's plenty of teams, you know, kind of creeping up on them. Give me an update on where we stand. Mount's in first place. Plenty of challengers. We created just a bit of separation over the last week. Let's take a look at the Mount first. What the Mount did last week was do something it hadn't done all year. Win away from Not Arena. Two road wins, and they did it the hard way. They went out to Western PA and swept Robert Mars and SFU. And as any coach will tell you, that is not easy to do. In fact, Mount hadn't done it since the 1996-97 season. So that's, that's nearly 20 years right there. Uh, also, the Mount now, 5-1 and one in the NEC. It matches their best ever start. They've never started 6-1 and one in NEC play in their long history in the Northeast Conference. How they're doing it? With their trademark defense. They're forcing turnovers. They're creating their mayhem. And they have some balanced scoring with Gregory Graves, uh, BK Ash, both averaged over 14 points a game last week. They're getting contributions from many people. They're getting it from Junior Robinson, who's just blossoming as a sophomore. You're seeing Chris Ray turning into one of the high flyers in this conference. So when you look at the mount, you see a team that's deep. Uh, they have their, a style unto themselves, and it's really hard to win in their arena. So as the year goes on, and if they can stay near the top of the standings, they'll be positioning to get home games, as many as they can, in Emmitsburg come March. <coughs> Along with Mount St. Mary's, the team that really impressed me last week was LIU Brooklyn. LIU started out the year one and three, not the start they were looking for. Now they had to go on the road. And who are they playing? Wagner and Bryant. Two teams tied for first place. So if things don't go right, they're staring down the battle of a one and five start to the season, which is hard to, it's a hard uh, hole to climb out of. But what they did, they came out with a sweep. Now three and three, right back in the mix. How did they do this? Well, first they started at Wagner. Tough place to play, uh, great atmosphere for this game. One of the, one of the more uh, intriguing games you'll probably see all year. Wagner seemed to be running away with this game, up 17 in the second half. LIU answered with a 17-0 run of their own. Then it became a, a game of spurts where, each, where Wagner would take the lead, LIU would catch up. This went on until the final moments when uh, LIU finally forged ahead and it came down free throw line. Uh, Corey Henson had uh, two shots at the line. He made the first, trailing by a point, puts up the second, 75% free throw shooter, misses. Wagner gets two shots to tip it in and the final one by Michael Carey just misses. And LIU escapes with the victory. Very reminiscent of a game a couple of years ago that was televised in the NEC where Kenny Ortiz put in, uh, had a putback at the buzzer to beat LIU. So from there, LIU travels up north. They go to Smithfield, they play Bryant. Bryant, another team, plays great in their gym. But LIU just had their, they had their shooting goggles on that night and uh, broke away from uh, the Bulldogs in the first half. Trevin Woods, who had really struggled this year, uh, shooting from the outside, hit four threes in a four minute span in the first half, wound up with a career high 20 points, six trifectas, a great game for him. And Akeem Santil, who was the NEC Player of the Week, averaged over 21 points for the week. LIU has a legitimate uh, base of three players that are as good as you'll find in the NEC with Jerome Frink, uh, Martin Hermanson, and Akeem Santil. And if they're getting contributions from players like Trevin Woods and Norizana and Joel Hernandez, they'll be a tough team as the season, as the season wears on and their chemistry starts to uh, get in sync. So, Good weekend for LIU, good weekend for Mount St. Mary's. Still kind of tightly packed, seven teams separated by two games. All right, Ron, well, it's still early in conference play, so we'll see how things shake out. But now it's time to take a Twitter timeout. What do you got for me on social media out there? Tweet of the week comes from Meg Ryan, not, not the actress Meg Ryan, Megan Ryan from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. RMU beat writer, Saturday, Sewell Center, Colonials desperately needing a win. Slow start there and their injuries uh, to a number of key contributors, including Rodney Pryor, second leading scorer in the conference. They needed a pick me up and they got it. They got it from Conrad Stevens, a walk on, a walk on. 
who entered the game with two career points in 14 career minutes over two seasons. The tweet, this was Conrad Stevens getting mobbed post-game by the whole team. Why did he get mobbed? Because Conrad Stevens came in off the bench, gave them 13 points, six rebounds, made all six of his shots in 21 minutes. A career night for a walk-on who may have earned himself a spot in the rotation. And maybe this was the boost that Robert Morris needed to get going because come March, I still have a feeling the Colonials will be in the mix. All right, Ron, well, congratulations to Conrad Stevens on his career night. Let's shift to our next segment, Who Said It? What's the quote you got for me to guess on this week? All right, here we go. You're not gonna get this one, there's no way. I was having a tough night, actually, so I was looking to pass the ball. But at the end, you just have to make something happen, and I did. Kyle Turner, who said it? That sounds like a point guard. I'm gonna go with Shane McLaughlin. You're not, you can't look at my notes anymore. I have a feeling you're cheating. Shane McLaughlin said it this week. He's our guy. Shane McLaughlin has now made two big shots in the last two weeks. If you remember last week, flashback time here, he made the shot against Mount St. Mary's to send the game to overtime at the buzzer. This week, he finds himself with the ball, time winding down against St. Francis, Brooklyn, 8-7-6, takes a screen from Marcel Petway, he spins back near the elbow, fades, flushes, flushes and dunk, swishes, and Bryant wins 61-59 over St. Francis, Brooklyn, a big win from a guy who's been making big shots the last few weeks, Shane McLaughlin. Well, McLaughlin's been coming in clutch, like you said, the last few weeks. Now it's time for our next segment. I know you like this one. Let's head over to the NEC film room. All right, let's go. We're back in the film room, looking at some plays that caught my eye last week. We're going to start in New Britain, Connecticut, and the finish, Central Connecticut, Sacred Heart. 2.8 seconds left in this game. Sacred Heart's down two, inbounding the ball under the central basket. What you want to look for here is Jordan Allen. He's their go-to guy at the end of the game on these uh, uh, under-the-basket, out-of-bounds plays. He's going to set a screen on Brandon Peel, but it's all misdirection, as we're going to see screen-the-screener action with Kane Broom screening for uh, Jordan Allen. Quincy McKnight's going to try to find him. Let's see how it all played out. There's the screen on Peel. Great job by Broom. Pass. Easy as that. Game goes back into overtime. Sacred Heart wins it. Good game in New Britain, Connecticut last Thursday. Great finish in regulation. Sacred Heart's done it before. We saw Jordan Allen against Colgate run a variation of the same play last year, which led to a victory on the road for the Pioneers. We talked about LIU Brooklyn earlier. Let's take a look at one of their plays from their game against Bryant on Saturday. Blackbirds, they have a lead here. They had just called a timeout, so this is a set play coming out of the break. You see Bryant in a 2-3 zone. And back in the back line right here, you have Jerome Frick, you have Trevin Woods. They're going to set screens on Dan Garvin and uh, Curtis Oakley. And then right here, near side, you have Joel Hernandez who can jump through the roof. Nobody pays attention to him, and Martin Hermanson will find him for the alley-oop. Let's roll it. Great screens there. No one within three, four feet of him. Part of the reason why LAU went 2-0 last weekend. Let's take a look at Fairleigh Dickinson now, FDU's motion offense. It's been paying dividends all year for the Knights. Here's an example against SFU on Thursday in Loretto. Let's roll it. You see the motion, stop it. There's Mike Holloway, he's caught the ball. This woman is trying to get in the way here, but we can still do this. We have Darian Anderson, you have Stefan Jiggets. They're gonna set, I guess what I would call an elevator screen on Greg Brown, who's gonna have to fight through it. Let's see what happens. He works his way through, but stop it. There's another screen. This is this screen here is gonna allow Darian Anderson to curl around, and you see Earl Potts right there on the top. He's gonna to go to the, he's gonna to go to the baseline, and then we'll cut down the baseline, and Anderson very smartly will find him here for two points. Go. That's a nice cut. And Earl Potts does what he does best. He finishes for Fairleigh Dickinson in their win on Saturday. Thursday, on Thursday. All right, now we're back from the NEC film room after Ron just broke down some plays for you, and I'm sure you loved it. Now we're gonna do a did you know. Ron, what do you got for me? 
Kyle Turner, did you know that Marcel Petway on Bryant University is one of 12 players in the history of the conference, we're going back 35 years, who has won five NEC Rookie of the Week awards? I, I did not know that. You did not know that. Of course you didn't know that. But I, what I will tell you is that look at some of the names of people who have done that. This is like a who's who of some of the best players who've ever played in this conference. Alex Blackwell from Monmouth. Julian Boyd from LIU. Recently, Alex Francis, 2,000 point scorer from Bryant. Latif Rivers, Charles Smith from Ryder. He was a great player in the early 90s. You're talking Jeremy Chappelle from Robert Mars. So he has five, the record is eight. The record is eight is shared by Black, uh, Alex Blackwell, Charles Smith, Darshan Lucky from St. Francis U, and Central's Kyle Vinales. We still have, I don't even know, five or six more reporting periods before the end of the season. So Marcel Petway has a shot, he's a, he's a fantastic player. I love the fact that he's a forward, center, I'm not sure exactly, but that he can really pass the ball. He's got great court vision, uh, he's a bull inside, he can rebound, and he can finish around the hoop. Uh, he's won these five awards and has deserved all the accolades he's gotten. He's a, a really big reason why Brian's 4-2 and two right now, heading into the fourth weekend of NEC play. Well, hopefully Marcel Petway will win some more of those awards and maybe challenge for that top spot, maybe tie some of those guys, maybe even beat some of those guys. Um, but now, what's the NEC on the dial TV game this week? We got a big one. Well, we got a lot of big ones. They're all big ones. We have a big game in that it's a national TV game. This Thursday night, CBS Sports Network, NEC crew, we're heading up to Fairfield, Connecticut. Sacred Heart will be taking on Mount St. Mary's. Mount is in. Mount's getting a lot of TV airtime around this time of year right now. Should be a good game. Two teams that like to get up and down the court. So I think you're gonna see some points. You're gonna see a lot of offense. You got some star power in Kane Broom in this game. Uh, should be a good one in Fairfield. All right, Ron, well, I'm excited for the CBS game, Mount St. Mary's at Sacred Heart, but we're not done yet. We have two other games on Saturday. No, 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 we have four games. Two double headers on Saturday. First, we start out in Smithfield, Robert Morris and Bryant, and actually, when you look at it, it's the women's game that's the marquee game here. Bryant, unbeaten, first place, Robert Morris, just one loss. They'll be playing at one o'clock, the men to follow at four. Then we switch, we head back to Brooklyn, Battle of Brooklyn, always one of the favorites in this league. Battle of Brooklyn, women at 5 p.m., men at 8 p.m., and there have been no shortage of great Battles of Brooklyn. Battle of Brooklyn's that the NEC has put on TV in recent years. I wrote all about them in, in our weekly report this week. Two of them that just are very distinct in my mind. 2010, triple overtime. Terriers take down the Blackbirds. Stefan, Stefan Perunicic hit a, hit a couple of big shots in that game. Keep sending them to overtimes. Uh, St. Francis wins. Following year, C.J. Garner from LIU goes coast to coast at the Pope Center. Place goes crazy. Wins it at the buzzer for LIU. It seems every year these games go down to the wire. It doesn't matter if the teams, one is up and one is down. They always seem to play uh, uh, close games. And this year, I think the teams are very evenly matched. Should be a good one in Brooklyn. All right, hopefully it is a good one in Brooklyn. Now, fans, don't forget, you can check out all the other games live on necfrontrow.com, free of charge. That's it for this week's edition of the NEC On The Run Hoops podcast. I want to thank Ron Ratner for joining me, and we will see you guys next week.